Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Talking Toku, the only podcast in existence where we talk about sci-fi monsters and dinosaur adventures. If there's another podcast that talks about sci-fi monsters and dinosaur adventures, you're wrong. You've been you've, you you someone has been gaslighting you your entire life. That that that's not that's not a thing. I'm sorry. You should have just left it at you're wrong. I mean, I can do that too. Anyways, I'm 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 your host, David. I'm Brian. This this is where our our, our guest comes in and introduces <laughs> oh, uh, himself. Sorry, I, was, I, was, I was reading a thing. <laughs> I'm Adam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Off to a stellar start. We really are. <laughs> Goodness gracious! But yes, Mister Thirsty Thursday Toys himself, Adam Griffin, is back once again, three times in one year. My goodness, Adam! Look at you go. It's crazy. Um, but yes, Adam is is here joining us. Uh, we're we're reviewing a movie of his choice. Do you want to yeah. do you want to tell us what we're reviewing yes. today, Adam? We'll, we 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 got some news to go through first, bud. You want to just 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 give the audience a little tease as to what we're going to be talking about today? Oh, today we are going to be talking about the greatest movie sequel that's part of a duology of all time, Gremlins Two. It's so good. Having never seen it before until just yesterday. <laughs> I, I can agree. I can agree. So I had I multiple double takes and I had to rewind it multiple times <laughs> to realize what the fuck was going on. I, I don't blame I you. I love, yeah, to hear from someone like who who just watched it because, you know, like I grew up on it and I feel like I'm, I'm curious to see like how it not holds up, but like what what it's like coming into it now <laughs> as opposed to, you know, 1990. Right. All right. Well, let's get through some of this news first so we can talk about this. Incredible film, truly. Um, got a couple of things. Not anything super, super big, but first things first, we got a new uh, teaser for the G-Team series being developed by Chris Mirjahangir. I finally understood, figured out how to pronounce his name. Uh, and O'Shea Jackson Jr. And that's only because O'Shea was on an interview, like a podcast, and he gave a tutorial on how to pronounce Chris's last name. So shout out to O'Shea Jackson Jr. for for teaching me. Um because I've never in all the time in all the years I've known Chris, I've never known how to pronounce his last name, but it's it's all good. We got it. Um it's nothing super big. Uh it's just a picture of Guy Gan and he looks pretty sick. That's that's kind of the longest. It looks short of it. so good. It does. I I don't, I, I don't think I saw this. Oh my god, Brian! How could you? You don't don't you follow Kaiju United on on social media? They posted it. I do. Let me go look right now. Uh, how long ago did they? I don't know. Upload this. Not super long ago. I'll Within send the past it. week. I'll send it to you, Brian. Oh, I found it. You found it. It looks cool. It does look cool. Yeah. It's cool as hell. There you go. Uh, I don't know if this teaser means they're any further along in getting the show picked up. I hope it does. I don't know. I hope I hope we see it soon. I really hope it gets made because everything I've heard about it looks and sounds incredible. Make GT team happen, please. Please, please, please. Yeah, what he said. All right. Brian, what else is going on this week? Uh, we got that Wolfman trailer we or did teaser. Either. Not really a trailer, but it was a teaser. How how and, we uh, uh, how are we feeling about this? I am a big fan of Invisible Man, mm. so I'm on board right now. I'm on board, and I've heard everything. Everything about Upgrade is great. So yes, I haven't seen it though. I haven't seen an upgrade. I yet. adore <clears throat> Leigh Whannell's Invisible Man film, and I really, really like Upgrade. I haven't seen the Insidious movie he directed. I've only seen the first Insidious, but I don't. I don't even know like what public opinion is about that film. He did direct. Do you know which one it is? Um, I can find out because I can tell you if it's good or bad. I've okay. only not seen the last one. All right, let's see. Films by Leo and L. Chapter two. Oh, wait, oh, no. No, uh, no, no. Chapter three. Oh. Sorry. Ch sorry. He wrote chapter two. 
You directed oh, chapter three. Uh, chapter three was the like kind of. Oh God! Oh no! I'm sorry to tell you this, Dave. Oh no! Um, this is probably the worst one. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen like the. Oh, you know what? No, actually. Hmm. I don't know. I have not seen the last key, and I have not seen the red door. Both of which I've heard were fine or bad, but <laughs> I have seen chapter three, and I was pretty bored. Okay. <laughs> Well, so he directed chapter three before both Upgrade and The Invisible Man, so I'm going to chalk it up to growing pains. Yeah, I'm hoping it's that, because chapter <laughs> three was bad. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Wolfman trailer looks interesting. I like the vibe they're going for. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people are questioning the Wolfman design that was shown off at Universal Halloween Horror Nights recently with good reason <laughs> it's it's a choice to say the least i have not seen it yet but let me oh look. no brian it, it looks less like the wolfman and more like strange mr wolfman who just lives up the way yeah it it, it it's it's like a feels like a homeless guy you'd see on the on the corner of a street at in the middle of boston <laughs> oh my god it looks bad <laughs> yeah so he yeah. looks more like the leper from the it movies oh know. yeah yeah Ooh. i I've, i'm seeing a lot of people think like maybe this is the one that bites the main character and the the main character when he transforms it'll be a more traditional werewolf look i don't know because mm -hmm. like if i remember correctly in the original wolfman the 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 one that bites lawrence is literally just a, a regular looking wolf it doesn't have any like wolf man characteristics it's just a wolf that bites him so mm. who knows maybe we'll get a more traditional design other than the design i think it looks good i trust lay winnell i think he knows what he's yeah. doing i think so i mean hey you know what he took the invisible man premise and he made it very interesting he did so i mean Maybe this is just, this can be chalked up to us just not seeing, like, everything yet. I yeah. don't know. I mean, if you said that you're making a new Invisible Man movie, and instead it has to do with a suit instead of just a guy, I would be skeptical. Yeah, that's, if that's I true. If I had no prior knowledge about the Invisible Man or Lee Wan L or anything, I'd be skeptical. But you know what? I'm going to keep my mind open. Because I fucking love Invisible Man. That movie fucking rocks, dude. Moving on, we have... Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Brian, Brian just saw it and goes, oh, no. He knows it's coming. Um, oh, no. <laughs> but but I, I have faith in our good pal Adam here because he's a, he's a fellow, fellow, fellow Jurassic stan. So he'll have some, yep. some oh. uh, thoughts on, oh. on, on Jurassic World Rebirth, I think. Because we... They officially confirmed that title. I think they had, like, trademarked it earlier this year. So people were like, oh, that's probably the title of the movie. But now it's official. We have the, It's officially titled Jurassic World Rebirth. Uh, we have some pictures and a logo and everything. Thank you. My, pal, my, my good pal and co-host of DCM, Howard Miller, has, has gifted me a Snickers bar. Based. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, we also have a synopsis, which is neat. Five years after the events of Jurassic World Dominion, the planet's ecology has proven largely inhospitable to dinosaurs. Those remaining exist in isolated equatorial environments with climates resembling the one in which they once thrived. The three most colossal creatures within that tropical biosphere hold the key to a drug that will bring miraculous life-saving benefits to humankind. Johansson, Scarlett Johansson. It's, I don't know why I just had her, had her last name. Scarlett Johansson plays skilled covert operations expert Zora Bennett, contracted to lead a skilled team on a top-secret mission to secure genetic material from the world's three most massive dinosaurs. When Zora's operation intersects with a civilian family whose boating expedition was capsized by marauding aquatic dinos, they all find themselves stranded on an island where they come face-to-face -face with a sinister, shocking discovery that's been hidden from the world for decades. God damn it. <laughs> what? I am not excited. I am not excited. No. Not. Big no. No. <laughs> no. 
Do you know why? Why? Because once again, not only is this still is Dominion still in the timeline. I hate Dominion. <laughs> they they weren't gonna decanonize <laughs> Dominion. I know they're not. I knew it was. I knew it just wasn't gonna happen. But but they have a cool concept of dinosaurs on the mainland, and they end up on a fucking <laughs> island again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yeah. I, I'm, tired, I'm actually tired of it. I'm tired of, of of dinosaurs being on the mainland and then them going to some secluded <laughs> fuck all place in the middle of nowhere and it not being cool because it's the same shit over and over again. <laughs> Fucking bitch, shovel oh my god, my Brian, Brian! I'm so tired of it. <laughs> Brian, I think I think this is the most angry I have ever heard you on this show. Oh uh, my god! Oh my goodness! It's okay. <laughs> Jeez. Tell us how you mm. really feel. Um, um how I really feel is that chaos theory is way better than this is gonna be. I agree. Yeah. Oh, but Ooh. I think I think I saw let me see if I can find it. I think I saw earlier, either yesterday or today, that they had revealed some of the dinosaurs that was that were in it. Nothing new. That's like what it's... I want to know. Okay, what are what are the big three? If one of them is the same T Rex, I'm gonna throw chairs. Well, it, 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 I, it didn't say like specific. It just said the species. Um, I thought I saw something. They bring back the Giganotosaurus and they try and they try and push the Joker narrative again. Oh my God, please! <laughs> <laughs> He's like the Joker. I like. <laughs> no, in that is green a little bit. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I every time I, I see the Giganotosaurus like playing Evolution or or like I don't know, I'm never watching that movie again. But I just think of that meme of of the Giganotosaurus putting the Joker makeup on. That's oh. All right, so I don't know if I ever sent that to you, but I'll have to show it to you. It's Adam. it's 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 up in the in one of the channels on this server. Um, but anyways, the species we have confirmed apparently. I don't know what the source on this is. But people have been taking this as as fact, so I, I, hopefully this is the case. Uh, we have a the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Whoa, shocker! We have wow. the Velociraptor. Whoa, shocker! Wow. We have the Gallimimus, which I don't I don't know if they if when was the last time they were in a Jurassic movie? I don't remember. They're probably in one of the world uh, movies. Uh, Fallen Kingdom. Okay. And then finally, Brian's favorite dinosaur of all time from these movies specifically, the Baryonyx. Oh my oh. god. Yes. Okay, yep, I'm back in. <laughs> okay. Okay. But can this Baryonyx just be a straight up rip of the uh of the Jurassic World uh um Camp Cretaceous? Uh, model that they use. <laughs> oh. It's just that the rest the rest of the movie just looks like like really high quality like big like you know CG money but and the then there's just like, is, 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 is noticeably just the lower quality. <laughs> yeah, well you named four species. They said three. What do you mean? Oh, oh, oh no, I think he's just talking about about like in general, not not yeah. the big three. Uh, no, that, yeah, that, that's not <laughs> the big three. I'm sure. See, I took that to mean there are only three species left. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I. Reading comprehension. I gotta okay. Yeah, I don't know. I just took it as I, as, as the like the physically the largest. Yeah, it's, it's, which, and it says the three most colossal mm. creatures. So I mean, I, we I can probably pick a, like open a Wikipedia right now and just deduce it. What are but, the three biggest dinosaurs that ever lived? I, I mean, I'm assuming you're looking at a. No, I'm not at all. I don't care oh, that much. Okay. I don't care. I that don't much. Mean, in the movies, either. we have Dreadnoughtus. We have Spinosaurus, we have Mosasaurus, we have Giganotosaurus, so that's four that's already bigger than the T-Rex. I would, I would yeah. fucking die of happiness if we saw that Spinosaurus again. Mm. I, was, I was already super pumped to see it come back in Camp Cretaceous, and I'd be happy, a very happy lad to see it back in the movies as well. But Yeah, so Jurassic yeah. World Rebirth is a thing. <laughs> I'm praying to God that this is not the first L we see from Gareth Edwards. I know I've said that God knows how many times on this show since he was announced for it, but I just, 
<laughs> I want him to make good movies. I want to see more good movies from Gareth Edwards, and I don't want this. To I be really different. hope he can make me not hate this premise. I agree. <laughs> All right. I. Never mind. <laughs> okay. No. <we're... laughs> I, don't... no we can, I mean, we could spend the next hour just talking about the idea of this movie. Oh, it's true. Maybe it, we should have done felt... that. <laughs> next we'll, episode. We'll, we'll table it. Um, so only a couple things left. This is also just another thing that exists. We got a f very short teaser for Alien Earth, which is the upcoming Hulu TV series from Noah Hawley, who is the, the showrunner behind Legion and Fargo, two very, very excellent shows. Um, apparently this teaser was played in some theaters after Alien Romulus. I don't know why. I think it was it was like very it was only specific screenings, um, but yeah. So the teaser got dropped online. It's it's public now. It's literally just a shot of the Earth, and then it zooms out and it shows that the Earth is reflected in the head of a xenomorph, and then it goes roar, and then it shows the title. Wow, that's all it is. Alien Earth exists. Um, apparently... I did hear a bunch of people crying on the internet about how it ruins the canon of some of their favorite uh, comic books. Oh, and the comic books are dubiously canon, anyways. I know that's why I was like kind of confused as to why people were mad about it. As the the movies people get rarely ever reference mad. the comics <clears throat> in the first yeah. place. I don't know, hmm. but this is supposed to come out next year. Um, the premise is when a mysterious space vessel, cra the vessel, vessel, vessel crash lands on Earth, a young woman and a ragtag group of tactical soldiers make a fateful discovery that puts them face to face with the planet's greatest threat. And if I am remembering, oh my God, is it an alien? It might. Can you believe it, Brian? I think you. I think you might be onto something. It's just David. Well, the it's thing is, David. this I think this takes place before Prometheus. Oh. Whoa, wait, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what? <laughs> how? Are they going back on the how aliens are made thing? Well, like so, well here, here, here's the thing. I don't think... I don't think the, the engineers made the aliens. Oh, I thought, no, I thought where they were going with... What they were going with was that David made them. No, because in in Prometheus, when they get into the main like chamber, you see there is like a sculpture of a of an of a xenomorph on one of the walls. So I think, oh. I, I th again, it's very confusing, but I think the way it works is the engineers discovered the aliens and they were experimenting with them. Man, they gotta they gotta clean up this <laughs> alien cannon like right the fuck now before they start making more stuff. I know. It, it wasn't a problem when the franchise was on ice, but if they're gonna make more stuff, they got to do it. It's, they got to do a yeah. they got to do a cannon crunch right now. What? Hold on. <clears throat> what are some of these names? I'm looking at the cast. It's not the it's not the actors' names, but it's the character names. Okay, so we got Wendy. She's our lead character. That's that's a normal name. CJ. That's a oh, normal no. name. Boy Cavalier. Okay, that's strange. Dame Sylvia. And then there's someone named Slightly. This is Peter Pan? <laughs> and then there's someone named Toodles. Oh, they're doing a Peter Pan thing. Is this a Peter Pan thing? Yeah, Slightly and Toodles. Okay. I, I don't they're remember the boys. last time I saw anything Peter Pan related, so I'll never mind. I'm so glad I'm so glad that you're here, Adam, to make us not look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know anything about Peter Pan. So if you weren't here, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> like maybe on the slightly, but a hundred percent with the toodles. Mm. Okay. All right. Cool. Never mind. I, I rescind my previous comment. Also, Timothy Oliphant is in this, so Ooh. I'm already on board. I fucking love Timothy Oliphant, and he's playing an android, which is sick. Wow. I'm on board. That is sick. Um. I hope it's good. I hope it's good, too. Yeah. Again, I have not seen anything from Noah Hawley that I didn't really, really like, so I have high hopes. So, yeah. Uh, last piece of news. This is this is pretty uh, kind of small, but we have uh, Chris Black, who is one of the writers for Monarch Legacy of Monsters. He is going to be showrunning one of the spinoffs. It doesn't say which spinoff. It's just that he is 
he 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 is one of the sh- he's the showrunner for one of the spinoffs, whatever that spinoff may be. Um, I know because I know they they had announced a bunch. They were doing a couple of them, but I remember recently Apple TV said they canceled a bunch of stuff because they lost a lot of money this past year. I don't know what that means for all those various spinoffs that they were planning on doing, but we'll see. Yeah, that's 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 about it. Chris Black, he's doing mm. he's doing a thing. Doing a thing. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, um, that's about it for the news. So we I have any more discussion t- things? So we. Um. Oh. Else? Um. Rest in peace, James Earl Jones. Oh yeah, I heard about oh, that earlier. Yes. Yeah, ninety three. It's not kind. You know, I, I was saying ninety three years old. I'd be pretty happy if yeah. I lived to that age. If if, if you live, hard, yeah. I mean, and also like, what a career and like an impact. Like, you mm. know, it sucks. It, it really sucks. It's a huge bummer. But like, man, I just happy you got to live such a long life. Yeah, and he was <clears> working like pretty much right up until the end of his career too. Like he was he yeah. was still voicing Darth Vader in the Obi Wan Kenobi series. I know some of it was um, with AI. Because he sold, yeah, I his, remember people being big mad about that. Yeah, he sold his the rights to his voice to be used for AI in future productions. So, I guess it's not the last we're gonna hear of James Earl Jones. So we'll see how mm-hmm. that turns out. But I think he he still hopefully he negotiated a nice contract so that his estate or his oh, family I'm sure he gets a, a pretty penny for that that yeah. Disney money. I'm <laughs> sure he did, but mm-hmm. yeah. 93 that's it's it's not a short life so i i think you know if, if you're if you're living past 90 like you you you, you lived a good life i think but, you deserve a good rest yes <laughs> uh, yeah it's a bummer yeah that sucks it's been a lot of there's been a lot of big deaths uh i feel like recently last year ish i feel like the last year we had a bit of a break and then this year was big yeah but all right that's it now we can talk about what adam calls the greatest movie sequel of all time of all time of all time um i i made a single note here on our google doc and i want to know if either of you are going to know what the hell i'm talking about adam you might but we'll see um the it's 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 two words it's just breaking bad there were a lot of Breaking Bad people in it. Yes. Like lots. What do you mean lots? Oh, yep. Like, I don't know, three, right? Three? Three? I thought there was only two. Three, four. I don't know. Uh, oh, well, I mean, are we talking across both films? Across both films. Across both films. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because um, Jonathan Banks is one of the cops in the first one, and then I didn't see him. I just saw him in the credits. Dean Norris plays one of the SWAT officers in this movie, so... There's, there's some and Tuco Salamanca. What? Yeah, you didn't really. Wait, who's who's your third? Oh, I don't know. I just, I was just guessing. Well, but... Hold on. Well, where, where where is Tuco coming from? Do you, do you, do you know more than one? He's the uh, the the package delivery guy. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. he goes. I saw yeah, that. Goes, I was like, what? <laughs> I haven't seen him in anything. Neither have I. Since I, watched, or since I watched Breaking Bad, I haven't seen him in anything. I didn't even to realize be fair, that. I didn't know this until my wife pointed it. She's like, wait a minute. I know that guy. <laughs> wow. Anytime I see anything Breaking Bad related on screen, I point at the screen and I go, Breaking Bad. <laughs> it's just like Breaking Bad. It's, it's a the So it happened, it happened, what, twice last night when I saw it? Um, I saw... Um, Dean Norris and uh, Tuco. I don't know his real name, but... <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He's yeah. always and forever Tuco. Mm-hmm. I did lots of pointing at the screen yesterday, you? actually. You, 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 were, you, were, you were just that one that one meme of uh, DiCaprio. <laughs> yeah. No, I was... And you know what the funnier part was? Is that I was alone. Oh. Yeah, so I was alone. <laughs> that is, Sam was not here. To nobody. She awesome. was not here. I was just, I was just pointing at the screen out of confusion a lot of the time. But you know, let's see. Uh, 
anyways, uh, Adam, tell tell us about your relationship with this movie. I want to know. I I want to, I want to know your history with it. <clears throat> I don't know. Like, okay, when when I was growing up, um, we'd have for my birthday every year we'd have like a slumber party kind of thing. We'd go to the arcade. We'd go to the collectible shop next door to the arcade. I'd buy Godzilla figures, um, and then we'd rent a couple of movies, and and it would always be. Uh, my friends would vote on Goonies. It would be Goonies every year. And then I would pick Gremlins. And then we'd always end up watching a Godzilla movie. So it was those three. And it kind of went back and forth between Gremlins and Gremlins 2. Um, but that was just a part of <laughs> an annual, like, viewing of of Gremlins. And it's it's so good. Like, the older I get, the more of these references I pick up within it. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it just gets better with with my age. I, I actually watched a, uh, I don't know if you watched uh, the YouTube channel dead meat, but they did a, an episode on gremlins too. And I watched it today uh, to Ooh. like kind of refresh a little bit. And they point out like all the references and there is a lot of references. Damn, <laughs> Apparently oh. the gremlins to dead meat episode was like the most script passes they ever had to do. Oh my God. For an episode up until that point. Oh my God. <laughs> Damn. I should, I should have looked that up. Look, I didn't know they yeah, did yeah, one. Okay, dead dude. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty, uh, it was very, very interesting. Uh, there, I also didn't realize that, um, it took a fucking shitload of time to get this made. And it basically, was just the director being like, I don't want to make this movie at all unless you give me complete creative control. And this is what complete Boy, creative control you looks can, like. You can you can <laughs> fucking tell that, that he had complete creative control over this movie, man. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> well, okay, so the first Gremlins, it had a budget of, what, $10, 15000000 million? Mm. And it made like easily 10 times that back in the box office Mm -hmm. and Warner brothers is like, yeah, this is amazing. We'll do another one. And Dante's like, no, we, we did the story. It's done. (laughs) It's closed. The only reason you want to do another one is to make more money. And they're Mm -hmm. like, yeah, welcome to Hollywood. So then they're like, we're, we're going to make this with or without you. And they decided they needed him. (laughs) I guess they like shopped around Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, they they said, okay, well, we'll up your budget. I, I, I've tried to look it up. I, find different numbers between 30 and 50 million. So three to five times the budget kind of thing. Um, and they said, well, yeah, we'll give you complete creative control. And that was their mistake. So of uh, course he jumped on it. Mistake? <laughs> well, it was, this was amazing. It made $40 Not million dollars at the box office, Brian. Yeah, oh, no. no. <laughs> so it may not have even made its budget. <laughs> I meant in terms of quality. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but quality, yeah, it's the greatest movie sequel of all time. But man, that fifty million or whatever, that stings. You can kind of tell, though, that it, like, the budget was because, like, the sets in this movie are ridiculous. Insane. You can you can tell exactly. You can see fifty million dollars worth of budget yeah, in that. for sure. I mean, that the animatronics for the Gremlins alone was. was oh my god! I, I've never seen like a more fluid animatronic than the the brain Gremlin talking, his mouth moving. I'm like, that's talking. just yeah. that's just real. That's not a, that, that, oh, that's a I, real creature I'm seeing right now. They had us. They had a segment talking about this on that Dead Meat episode. I hate to keep bringing it up, but this shit. They programmed each individual lip to move with the audio. Oh my god! And so that's why it looks so fluid, because well, they computerized it like that. <clears throat> Rick is... Baker, right? He did the creature effects. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe I so. Got pulled the IMDb, actually. I, I remember seeing him in the credits. Yes, yeah, it was Rick Baker did the effects. Just amazing, amazing stuff. Yeah, so I I have actually not seen the first gremlins movie oh so i lied this... to adam then i thought you had <laughs> You've only seen the second. no this is my first interaction <laughs> with gremlins so this is no okay now you need to watch the first one i no, think i might have to because well, you told me that it's it was like very straight like that was more straightforward like the story was mm-hmm. done but in this one 
They fuck. They fucking review the first one in this one. <laughs> yeah. They, yes. They okay. fucking the like, movie what? Gremlins <laughs> exists within the universe of Gremlins too. That's and why it's okay, canon. That's what I was. <laughs> that's what I was doing when I missed my cue for the intro. Oh. Um, I have here Leonard Malton's movie guide. So he gave Gremlins a two star, mm. and he gave Gremlins two three stars. <laughs> okay. Let me read this. <laughs> Not so much a horror film as a goofy send-up of itself, which is fucking perfect. Um, this uh, this uh, this sequel turns the slimy creatures loose in New York City, filled with gags, movie in jokes, satiric barbs, and gratuitous cameo appearances, including himself. <laughs> so they they got someone who gave the movie a bad review, had him cameo in the second one. And then the the second movie's review got higher ratings. This sounds like he got bought <laughs> off. <laughs> Brilliant! And he's he's getting eaten by the grub. Oh god, that's the le- it's the meta humor and just nonsense. In this. yeah, just, it's cranked to eleven. It it like it's when it started off in that fucking like dingy like shop with like the old like the old Chinese guy and then the and then um what's the what's the normal gremlin's name? Gizmo, Gizmo or something? Gizmo, yeah. Gizmo? And he's watching uh he's watching fucking uh Rambo. <laughs> I was like I was like they if they do something with this, I'm gonna I'm gonna be really happy by the end of this. And uh and they did. You were not they did do something well, I can't imagine you were in the first one He's watching some like racing movie mm-hmm. early on, and then later, like in the you know finale with the bad guy, he's like racing this car kind of thing. So as soon as so, if you'd seen the first one, then you're like, oh, there, he's 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 picking up something here. Yeah. This would have made more sense if I if I saw him being Rambo, like watching Rambo, I would be like, he is gonna be Rambo by the end. <laughs> he's of gonna movie. be Rambo. But also, I feel like it kind of is better that I didn't watch the first one because all of the Things that I you're supposed to know about gremlins, I don't know. And so it's just oh. <laughs> it felt like everything was just like happening and there was no reasoning or anything happening, but it was like chaotic <laughs> and insane. And I couldn't take my eyes off of it. I mean to to an extent, like that was probably also intentional, <laughs> I feel. Like it this is yeah a movie where it's pretty much chaos personified and that's just that feels very fitting for the gremlins franchise because that's that kind of their whole thing um yeah but yeah it's but it's like it's like a live action cartoon that's also a horror movie yeah i mean the fucking like at the the fucking like electro gremlin fucking zipping around that's literally looney tunes animation i mean they literally. literally have the looney tunes at the start of the movie oh yeah right right at the beginning yeah i i didn't even i'm going to be honest with you i skipped it what <laughs> but Brian? Then, <laughs> But then I went back. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Good. I went back. Yeah, I was that. I was not expecting that. Like I, I'd seen a little bit of this movie when I was a kid, but I, I didn't finish it. I don't remember the Looney Tunes shorts as being part of this whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I blocked that part out. It was. It, it was kind of like. I, I, I was. I start, started. I'm like, am I, am I watching the right movie? Like what's 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 going on here? This is Gremlins too, right? But like, what audience is this for? And I realize it's not. It's for Joe. Dante. It's for Joe Dante. Yeah. Well, and it is for you, Adam. It's for you. It is it's for me. Oh my it's god. For you. Um, do we want to even tr- attempt to like talk about the plot or like summarize it, or do we just want to? I don't even know. I I. It's just a bunch of gremlins trapped in a big building in New York. This does feel more like just a series of bits rather than it, it, a story. It is. Yeah. It's 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 just vignettes. So the first gremlins, yeah. once, once you see it, it's I mean it's like you know kind of a, what you'd expect for like eighties nineties creature horror kind of stuff. The the dragon heart era of, mm. of stuff critters, but it also has these little vignettes. Um, but this takes the vignettes and cranks them up to 11. 
it's the whole movie. Yeah, it's the whole movie. Pretty much. Yeah. Like you have to set um, up for like a good half hour, it. and then it just goes yeah. nuts. <laughs> they just go. The well, okay. Once you watch the first one, the bar scene alone. Is... Oh, I've heard about the bar scene. I've heard about it. Um, basically, as soon as they walk into that like that lab uh, with the head. Uh, the fucking head scientist being fucking Christopher Lee. Oh my Lee. god! Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> that's that's when the movie take like a, like actually starts like really going. I actually did a double take when I saw his name pop up in the credits. I'm like, Christopher Lee is in this of all movies, and then he was like, he, yeah, Doctor Catheter. I'm like, okay, that's yeah, Doctor Catheter. Name. Oh my god, what a <laughs> horrid name! <laughs> Jesus Christ. The, uh, he seems like he's having a blast, and everyone seems like they're having such a great time. Oh, I can't, yeah. I can't I, imagine I mean, this movie was not a blast to make. I, it, like even like being on the effects team yeah. was pro- probably like one of the most fun jobs you could have had. You have oh. a you have a you have a fourth wall breaking Hulk Hogan cameo. I mean, how could you oh, not yeah. have fun with this? What the fuck? <laughs> I was okay. Um. A little background. When I was watching this last night, um, I I have two ferrets, and I was watching both of them. So every once in a while, I'd have to get up and make sure they weren't killing themselves or doing something else nefarious. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got up, made sure they were fine, sat back down on the couch, and all of a sudden, there's fucking Hulk Hogan screaming. <laughs> <laughs> screaming and I had to this is when I had to rewind it to figure out what was even happening uh, just the and then I found out that it's up. just a full on it's a full on fourth wall break of the fucking gremlins ruining the movie and then Hulk Hogan getting pissed off at them I I wish I could have seen this in theaters because like the whole like the film burning out like you don't really get that nowadays because all projectors are digital and obviously we're watching this on a digital TV, so like it doesn't work as well. I wish they could do more cool stuff like that in movies, but like you can't really do that anymore because I feel like kids these days aren't going to understand what that even was. What what is actually happening? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, have have you, did you see the uh, the home video version of that? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. So on the VHS. It's it's a completely different scene. Really? So yeah, instead of the film reel burning up, um, the the VHS like skips and errors, and then the gremlins come in and they do the the silhouettes with the the um, you know the bunny rabbit yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But then it like switches to some John Wayne movie, and it's like multiple scenes with the gremlins cut. <laughs> into a John Wayne film what? and someone doing like a terrible John Wayne impression. As oh my voice. God. But then he I... like kills them all. And then he's like, let's get back to the, the actual movie. Wow. I need to see this. <clears throat> Cause yeah, wow. it's definitely, it's probably on YouTube somewhere. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. wild. That's nice that they went the extra mile to like do that for the home release. I don't really oh. do that a whole lot anymore. No. Making different versions for home releases and whatnot. It's a bummer. Damn. Uh, I'm going to look that up after this, though, because that sounds... And then, But even hilarious. then, like, how would you even do that now with the advent of, like, 4K Blu-ray discs? Like, how, yeah. how, how, oh, do, yeah. how do you go about updating that, that scene for, for this generation? Or just, like, a, for, like, streaming? Uh, I mean, you'd have to make... Like, oh, I mean, that's easy. You could just make the loading wheel. Oh, that's true. That is true. Ooh. But also, like, you might end up confusing people with is, that one mm, <laughs> people are stupid they, they are infinitely I mean, stupid it is true but also <laughs> like it, the you know with the fi- the film reel effect like that was pretty quick like it yeah. happens and then it, mm-hmm. they come in but like if you have the loading wheel it would be confusing and if you have any other like kind of digital glitch people are just gonna think it's a digital glitch <laughs> yeah <laughs> because shit breaks all the time now I don't know, <clears throat> but I I liked it for for what it was. Even if if the original context of it was is uh, no longer available to me. Well, it wasn't because I wasn't alive when this came out. But you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, hey, so that that, that that uh that that guy Forster, he totally is gonna fuck that gremlin at the end, huh? Oh no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how that's the note this movie ends on. Like In the little eyebrow raise. Yeah, and, and like he's he's he even like, smiles. He's like, yeah, okay, I'm down for this. I you guess. know, I mean, people have done weirder things. Come on, come on. Very, very. Uh, true. I did not like the female gremlin. I thought she creep. She was creepy, and uh, I didn't like her. <laughs> I didn't I like. That, the, yeah. I didn't like the big lips. I was revolted. I was icky. Uh, yeah. What was her name, by the way? Greta. Greta? Of course. I knew it was going to be something G. <laughs> Why? Oh, Grem that's That makes sense. Oh, yeah. Gremlins. Greta the Gremlin. And Gizmo, I, I guess, never, yeah. Never thought of that. Come on, Dave. Come on. But that doesn't that, but that doesn't cuz you got Stripe from the first movie. That's not a G. Oh. Well, and this one is Mohawk, the villain. Don't ask questions. Okay. <laughs> My favorite scene. I think that really emphasizes everything. There, uh, so Billy goes up to the like control center and he's talking with the security folks, and they're like mocking all the rules, oh, yeah. which is something that had happened since the first movie came out. And they're like, "Okay, well, what if what if a gremlin eats something and then it got gets some food stuck in his teeth and then it goes past midnight and then the food comes out? It's not technically eating, but now it's got food in it." And then another guy's like, "Yeah, but what if they're eating on an airplane and you cross a time zone because it's midnight somewhere?" And then which are like legitimate questions if you're delving into like the the rules of the sci-fi. Mm -hmm. But then um a gremlin pops out of the control panel and just starts attacking them and literally punches that guy in the face. <laughs> and I'm like that's that's Dante going like just shut up, don't think about it, mm -hmm. enjoy what we have presented you. See the the, oh, the, man. Like, that's, the, the, the one that always that 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 got because like all those I never really thought about those. But the, the 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 thought I always had was like, how how far after midnight does it have to be? Like, what if yeah, you what, what, what if it, it what if it all, you go till morning? Like, that's still technically after midnight. Yeah, every every time is after midnight. exactly. Dave, if you keep asking these questions, I know. Uh, Gremlin's gonna pop Gremlin's out of your computer and beat you. the shit out I of know. you. <laughs> maybe it'll be maybe it'll be the the brain Gremlin. He can. Take over the podcast. Oh my god! Because well, love bring gremlin. That he was so his fucking voice. Good. I he <laughs> was going through so many different fucking accents. I could not get a <laughs> get a grasp on it, but I that was that just added to the charm of it. Like I was like, I oh, liked there's his a musical number. Oh yeah, singing New York, New York. That was pretty pretty York, solid. Yeah. That, that was, was my really, definitive really New York new. <laughs> I like every other version sounds wrong to me. <laughs> it's it's gotta Whenever be the you Gremlins hear that song, You just think you just think about Gremlins when you hear the Gremlins. <laughs> yeah. Um, fucking my my favorite Gremlins bit was the uh, the Gremlin with bat wing wings flying outside and then becoming a gargoyle. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was always I just thought like wow so that's how they end up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's. That's the type of shit they're like, okay, what can we do with this? And then take it a step further and then take it a step further. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I really thought that they, they were just gonna Like if this was a normal movie, they just have a bat gremlin wreaking havoc, but no, uh, they yeah, had him go outside, get into a fight with that old man, get uh, covered in concrete and then flies up to the top of a building uh, in into a conspicuously empty spot on top of this <laughs> giant high rise and just perfectly posed there as a gremlin. You didn't have to do any of that, but, but Dante did. And I respect he did. it. <laughs> well, plus the, the Batman. Oh, oh yeah. The, the, the Batman hole. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh my God. I, that I had to take a double take at that, that fucking part, the whole, and I was like, is, was that the fucking Batman logo? And then I went back and I was like, that was the fucking Batman logo. <laughs> the, God, oh. This must have been so fun to write. Have you guys seen the, the Key and Peele bit? No. No. Okay. At, at some point, go watch that. I feel like that's legitimately like the writer's room. 
just all these little bits they put in. It's just like one more thing. Like what if what if he breaks through the wall and then it's the the bat symbol? <laughs> what if like yeah? What if he becomes a a, a a gargoyle? What if like man? I mean, it really does feel like a movie where you're just like shooting the shit and you never write anything off or like get rid of any idea. <laughs> you just keep everything. You just keep everything. Yeah. You know, watch they, this. I, so my sorry. No, no. Go ahead. No, I was like the the smart building. There's tons of like one liners just in the background from the building itself. That, oh, like, yeah. If you're not paying attention, you'll miss it. It's I'm one of my sure favorite I jokes. <laughs> there's there's one where it's like tonight on the clamp cable channel. Don't miss Casablanca now in color with a happier ending. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's it's just... so it's so like weirdly dystopian, but also kind of upbeat it's very very strange because and it's it's localized entirely in this one single building like it's not like the, that's the whole world it's just in this one single building i mean when i saw the building and how it was just a giant company and how they're selling fucking books down at the gift shop <laughs> i was just like this is making fun of of donald trump like that's absolutely <laughs> And then, but then at the end of the movie, they made him okay. They made him fine. Like, he's not a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's chill. Uh, very weird. He also has a pneumatic tube, like a secret one that comes out from the street. Yes. And he's and, like, uh, yes, I can finally use it. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's such a specific thing to have. He must have known there's there would be something that would, oh, well, that would cause yeah. him to use it. <clears throat> He's got the the one the the videotape he puts in for like the end of the world. Oh yeah! Oh, like we, yeah. we hope you've enjoyed our programming, but more importantly, we hope you enjoyed life. Like, Did you know is... that that's actually something that the U.S. like government made? What? No. In, in, what? In, in case, like, I think it was the like the I don't know the State Department or the the DoD or something. They made like some kind of like back during the Cold War. They made like a video uh, like like that. Basically saying thank you for being a citizen and thank you for living or whatever. Or I hope you had a good wild. life. In case the Cold War turned hot. It is like a real thing, I guess. Um, I mean, that never been never been aired, obviously, but you know. Do you think do you think it's you can find it somewhere? I'd be kind I of interested. I, I'd I mean, be kind of interested to see it. I doubt it. It's gotta be like I, I don't know. I, I don't know, actually. That's a good question. I'll uh Hey, I'll look it up later. We know the U.S. government is listening to literally everything. That's the whole. That's the NSA's whole job. Uh, yeah, NSA. So you guys give us should the tape. give us the <laughs> give us the tape. We just want to see. We're curious. You know, the Cold War's over. We're fine. Everything's okay. Maybe they'll give us the tape, and it's just the exact clip that they play in From Gremlins. Gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, hey, you know, you put it so good in that movie that we got rid of our old one and then we we just used the one from Gremlins too. Yeah. We we didn't even change the 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 name from Clamp Industries or whatever. It's it's it's, it's still Clamp. We yeah. Our program. Yeah. Oh my god. Hey, it won't matter anyways. I mean, that's true. You know. That's very true. <clears throat> uh. Um the uh another thing I wanted to uh to really mention was um the effects work, like the animatronics, and just oh. the entire scene of their gremlins going insane in like that fucking DNA mutation lab thing. Mm. Yes, like that was like visual comedy that I haven't seen taken to that level. <laughs> like, unless it's in cartoons specifically. Uh, they like they pack so much in there. They must have built hundreds of animatronics, like hundreds I of them. Because they destroy them, like, on the reg. Mm -hmm. Like, very, very, like, in the movie, like, they destroy them. And I, and the whole time I'm thinking they must either be, t like, getting them back and then rebuilding them, or they just built hundreds of them. <laughs> like, I don't know. Hundreds. Yeah. Uh, and they're gross. They're icky. <laughs> they're all gooey. I want to know what they use for that. I like the one where, like, it gets shot. And then it has a bunch of holes in it, and then it starts drinking, and the liquid's just coming out the holes. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and he just started laughing about it. I do like that oh. that Cather just has like a whole armory in the lab just in case. 
Like he's got actual <laughs> assault weapons in there. Like, dude, oh dude, yeah. Flash is like, no, they broke them all, but I have a small assortment of assault <laughs> weapons. Like, what the? The the fucking I forget which gremlin it was, but he just had a fucking Uzi yeah. and just started like opening fire in the lab. <clears throat> I was like, wow, this this took a turn. Uh, <laughs> we went from we went from slapstick comedy to gunfight, and then it goes immediately okay. back to slapstick <clears throat> after that. It it yeah. wastes no time. Because I had the same thought. I'm like, oh, this just got kind of a little a little bit serious. So I was like, no, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. Oh, no, now they're actually trying to kill you, not just fuck with you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's too, no, there's, there's too much Mohawk. to, like, remember that happened. There's so it, much going seriously, on. I feel bad today because, like, I was stressing at work. I was like, fuck, I, I like, am having a hard time remembering everything <laughs> in this movie. Yeah. Like, I have a few things that are just stored in my brain vault, but, like, the rest of it, it's just, like... I'm having a hard time, but mm. I'm, I'm, yeah, it's, it's definitely it. it's it's easier with you guys here. Uh, but I do need to watch it again because I feel like I missed a, an absolute shit ton of references. I mean, like I've, I've been watching this at least once a year <laughs> since I discovered it, and there's there's always like more that I'm picking up each time. That's oh, yeah. crazy. This... I love I love how movie when movies fucking do that where there's just so much and you can just go in and rewatch it uh, and always find something new. We're experiencing some technical difficulties. Try not to notice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I caught that one. That's good, though. <laughs> this, God, they're, they're so good. Oh, man. There's so many banger lines in this, in that movie. There's another God one. I've got, it's from, it's another, like, building announcement, but it's like, whoever has the car, you know, with this license plate, oh, please yeah. move it from the parking it's garage. Ugly it's ugly and awful. And yeah, it's old and, yeah. old and dirty. <laughs> I thought though, like th that one, like actually got like an actual full full blown laugh from me because like I, I was not expecting it to go in that direction. It was because you you wouldn't. It's like, oh yeah, please move it or you're gonna get ticketed or whatever. It's like, no, no, it goes into that. <laughs> it was <laughs> your, your vehicle's ugly. Get it out. Of here. I feel like this would be an absolutely amazing group watch. Oh, I'm oh, sure yeah. it would be. I mean, Adam, you were you watched it at birthday parties. You said, how how, how would that go? Yeah. Oh, I well, they wanted to watch Goonies. I wanted to see creatures doing things. Mm. Goonies. I wanted to see man. like you know kids our age kind of stuff. Mm. So I, I I just remember just me just sitting there watching it. I see. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> that's. I mean, I've watched it now twice in the last month. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, because I watched it like a few weeks ago because I was talking to someone about what's the greatest movie sequel of all time and why is it Gremlins 2? Mm. Um, and so then we had to sit down and watch it. And that was a few weeks ago. And then, we, you know, we're talking about this and I'm like, well, I should I should watch it again, you know, just to. <laughs> yeah, I might may as well, it. you know. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm like, oh. well, I should watch the first one and the second one back to back. So. <clears throat> to clarify, uh. We didn't actually know we were covering Gremlins 2 until like a two day ago. ago. Two days ago, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we should we should have opened with that, yeah. I I just realized that we I never realized, actually yeah. disclosed that. We 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 actually we actually asked our our friends of the show, uh, and and, and Adam came came running sprinting into chat <laughs> to, to recommend that. Gremlins 2. <laughs> <laughs> what monster movie do you guys want to talk about? I'm like Gremlins two all day, every day. Let's go. Yeah, and then and then Dave's just like, I guess we're doing Gremlins two. Yeah, I, I mean, you because you were you were the first one to respond. Jacob came back in later with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming out of their shells, uh, which I've also <laughs> never seen. But <laughs> uh, he he, you beat him to the punch, so we did Gremlins two instead. But we'll get Jacob on for coming out of their shells. That'll be fun. Yeah. I didn't even know they had a movie out of that. I thought it was just the stage show. Completely off topic. Back, I mean, back on topic to the movie. Okay. I just, I just, I'm looking at IMDb and I just realized something. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the voice of Gizmo? No. I, <laughs> I knew that. I knew it was Howie okay. Mandel. Okay. I, I did know that. Uh, but the two, like the cloned or twin scientist dudes under Dr. Catheter. They're twins. Martin and Lewis. They're actual twins. They're actual twins, but they are... They were the fucking security guards in Terminator 2, which is yes, a movie right. I just... 
I just Ooh. fucking watched. <laughs> and I, totally I didn't even realize that. it until right now. Wow. I think that's crazy. Um did did you watch it because of the caravan of garbage? Because they no, talked. Let's say yes. They they talked about it in that because they also had um, I guess in the extended cut of Terminator Two they do something similar because Linda Hamilton has an identical twin as well, and I guess in the in the extended ending of Terminator Two, the T one thousand takes on the form of Sarah Connor to like kind of kill John um and they just used her twin sister in that because like you know she comes in and tries to destroy it and everything's but yeah and like I think on the caravan of garbage they they just was like yeah that's like one of the easiest and most convincing special effects is just have a twin and you're good yeah <laughs> I mean that <laughs> I not, like first wait so wait, Linda Hamilton has a twin yes what Yes. Wait, <laughs> hold on. I didn't know this. I didn't know this either. This, until... is, mind this is mind blowing to me. I Apparently being, being an identical twin is far more common than I thought it was. <laughs> Leslie Hamilton. There you wow. go. I cannot believe I've, I've gone this long without knowing this. Oh, she passed away a few years ago. Oh, no. Oh, that's. Oh, yeah. 2020 dies of 63 at 63. Damn. Now that's young. Sixty three is young. That is young. That yeah. sucks. Wow, they are twins. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> Sorry, I interjected with that. No, you're good. Um, that's a good, good interjection. Speaking of people's ages, bringing it back, I was doing some math, and I should not have. <laughs> oh God. So, oh Bill, God. Uh, Zach Galligan, um, in Gremlins Two, I'm ten years older now than he was when he did Gremlins Two. How old was he in the Gremlins too? He was he was twenty six. How in Gremlins too? Gremlin and the first one was was that eighty six, eighty four. That was eighty four. So he was twenty. Whoa! Dang, I didn't realize he was that young when he did that movie. I'm like ah, oh, everyone's babies. Wow, we've had so many. We've had so more many. math. Oh God, not more math. The the book Clamp's book. <laughs> <laughs> that they're selling in the lobby okay. for nineteen ninety five, adjusted for inflation oh, is no. like forty five bucks. Oh no! Oh yeah, when I, you know, I was kind of thinking about that when I when I fucking heard that, and you know, like it's nineteen ninety five. I'm like, that's expensive for a book back then in nineteen ninety. Really? Yeah, books are like twenty dollars baseline now. I've seen some of that are like me? some hardcovers are like thirty. I've seen. I mean, if you go to Barnes and Noble and you go look at any book, more often than not, it's going to be yeah. between the twenty and thirty dollar range. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just it was just weird. <laughs> it's an expensive fucking book. And it didn't yeah. even look that big. And they were also like <clears throat> advertising it to kids too. It was like a school field trip they were telling these kids about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The book. They ain't, they ain't got that kind of money. Oh, you know what? Can we also talk about how the the uh, the clamp with the earth spinning in it like that oh, their, their logo <laughs> that looks that looks so ominous <laughs> it looks so scary like it's such a horrifying image to have attached to your brand like, it's very strange fuck? and inside the building the like cardboard cutout of him it's him next to the statue of liberty a he's taller than the statue <sighs> of liberty B, he has his hand on the statue's head with his fingers covering the statue's face. Oh. I don't think I, I caught that at all. I don't think I saw that. Yeah, no. When you rewatch it, go, go look at that closely. Where, <laughs> where is it in the movie? Like, where, is it near the it, beginning? It pops, it's in the lobby, so it pops up a few times. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I did oh not. I did not even see that, but you know what? I'm gonna have to watch this shit again. I should make Sam watch this. So honestly, I'm surprised yes. you didn't have her watch it this time around. While she was dog sitting. So oh, okay, that's fair then. I could not. Well, you can watch. But I will drag her into it eventually. But now you can watch, <laughs> do a double feature, and watch the original. It's true. I do. I do really want to yeah. watch the original now. You could wait Cause until I December because it is a Christmas. I was gonna movie. say yeah. It's like, it's like a Christmas movie. Is oh okay. All right. 
I mean, I don't really do uh, movie marathons in December like I do for yeah. the other months at the end of the year, specifically October. I was going to say, what do you do so in November? Maybe <laughs> it's time. I don't do November. Okay. <laughs> November doesn't matter in my head except for Thanksgiving. All right. Thanks killing. Thanks killing. Oh, you know what? I actually do need to watch the movie Thanksgiving. Oh, the, the Eli movie. Roth movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Eli Roth one, yeah. <laughs> so I I, I want to we should probably talk about this because people have been clamoring for a Gremlins 3 pretty much since this came out, I feel. And I understand that. But my my question, my response to that is, do we really think we can top this movie? I, no. I mean, I was going to I was going to say I, the, the response to asking for a Gremlins 3 is just Gremlins 2. You you can't do anything more than Gremlins two. You yeah, cannot. That's what I'm saying. Uh, like with all of the practical effects, like this is the limit. <laughs> like this is the hard limit. I don't think you can do more. Maybe could, with more budget. Could. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, it was also like it's also it seems just like something that wouldn't fly today. Like, I just don't think it would be greenlit today, like a Gremlins 3. Mm. Well, there's the, the animated series. Oh, Secrets of the Mogwai. I was going to ask about that. Is Have you watched that, Adam? I have not heard anything about I it. I have not seen it because I don't have... What what streaming service? I think it's on Is Max. It HBO Max? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have Max. I, I do that have was, Max. Maybe I should watch it. Because that was also <laughs> in development hell for a long, long time. Yeah, I was I'm, I was surprised that even it came out at all. Honestly, I'm always I mean, like like Camp Cretaceous and stuff. I'm always nervous of something that was kind of geared towards a specific audience or age range and making it more available to a wider audience. Not that that's a bad thing, because mm -hmm. like I love more people loving the things I love. But I, like knowing going in, knowing I'm not the target audience. Has me like a little nervous. Mm hmm. Mm. let's see I, I mean i also just i just think that like a gremlins 3 like today like i just think the media landscape it's just not conducive for it i don't know no. you would have to go back to playing it straight or doing like a reboot and i just think that would suck i don't know <laughs> i i think you could probably because i i mean this this movie it's it's very it's very satirical i feel like you could do that again just with the current landscape of film. I mean, the... Mm. the oh, most... so you're saying, like, make it, like, a screen? Yeah, kind of exactly. Thing? Like, I, I mean... Okay. Because mm. the... Not the most... Re I wasn't... I personally wasn't huge on Scream 6, but I thought the fifth one, Scream, not 5, because it's just called Scream, because that's what all uh, legacy sequels do now. Um, Should have been thought... 5 Cream, but... Go on. 5 Cream... <laughs> Okay, that's good. I like that. Um, I thought that was really, really good. I thought that that you know satirized the legacy sequel super, super well. I feel like you could do the same with Gremlins, honestly. You know, just basically but do like, it. Go ahead. The, uh, with with the the screams, it's it's more of a satire of horror movies in general, whereas mm. Gremlins Two is a satire of itself yeah yeah that's why i think that's it would be true. really hard mm. to make like a because then like you could you could be like uh, we'll, we'll make it into a you know like a satire on i don't know creature features in general but that's just like hard pivoting mm. to like making yeah. fun of everything instead of just gremlins you know yeah it's, it's gremlins it's... gremlins are so funny and hokey on their own that like this movie didn't need to make fun of anything else you know yeah mm. i mean it did but it didn't need to it was just, yeah. and also i feel I mean, like it made fun of it made fun of the the fucking parent company uh wb <laughs> it made fun of them a lot <laughs> if if they make another one i'm obviously gonna see it multiple times in theaters but i'm not i'm not sure what they could do that could top this yeah do you think uh do you think it would do any kind of numbers at the box office if it came out now. Probably oh, yeah. Not. I mean, like, th things like, there are these, like, cult classics that have come back and done amazing. Oh, I mean, like, a Gremlins 3. 
Do you think if they made a Gremlins 3, it would do any kind of numbers? I think so. Yeah? If, okay. if nothing else, it would be just me. <laughs> Seeing it millions of times. Buying yeah. out entire theaters just so you can see it. <laughs> I mean, I, I would respect um, that. I, I have... Yeah? I have been in a showing of... What was it? Transformers? The one with the dinosaurs? Um, oh, Age of Extinction. Yeah. And it's, it's just me in the theater. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, they're dinosaurs now. <laughs> Wait. Hold on. So I, I'm looking at Joe Dante's uh, page here to see what he's been doing since. Mm -hmm. and, and A, it's not a lot, but apparently he was attached to do the um, this the American sequel to Godzilla 2000. Was he? Apparently. Hold on. While you're looking this up, I have another fun fact. Looking at the IMDb for Gremlins 2, the gross U.S. and Canada, like the, the income, mm. $41,482,207. <laughs> gross worldwide, yeah. worldwide, $41,483,000. Uh, uh, so it made a thousand more dollars worldwide. You know what? I it honestly feels like Dante made a great movie and took WB's money and flipped them the bird and didn't care that it made no money. <laughs> because I mean, he made yeah, you exactly could exactly what he wanted to make. Yeah, you could you could go at right ahead and and watch the movie and that's very very obvious. It, it it's just so funny. It's so fun. It's like it's double funny that it didn't make back its budget. Because like it, it just it's a big fuck you to those yeah. uh, those execs. Like I fucking told you, we didn't need another one, but you were so desperate that you came back to me, and I still didn't make you the money that you wanted. Where did it lead you? Back to me. Back to me. I love like looking at a lot of the technology in the building because they're like, oh, it's the you know world's first like smart building kind of stuff. And there's a scene where Billy, he's on the phone, and the, the video phone, like, ooh, crazy technology, <laughs> 1990. And, like, his lights go off. And he's like, oh, my lights just turned off. And they're like, oh, yeah, they, you know, they turn off to save electricity, just jump around. That's a technology we have now. Yeah, it is. We've had that. But, like, that was something done for humor that's now, like, a real-world thing. Well, it's funny, because, like, that shit is real. It's usually like outdoors stuff, like like uh, your outdoor sensor lights. But like, I mean, yeah, I mean, like I've sure. been working like in my classroom, you know, late at night. I'm I'm sitting at my computer, and eventually the lights go off, and I have to jump up and down for the lights to come back on again. <laughs> oh, those are sensor like, lights. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, I'm like, what is this, Gremlin Two? Damn. Everything like, in oh, your life is geared it's towards driving you to Gremlins. It's all, it's all been leading up to this. <laughs> all right, oh, so, so, so I, 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 did, I did some research. So, mm -hmm. um, Adam, are, are you aware of the, the, of that sequel at all? Godzilla Reborn. Godzilla Rebirth. Re Re Jurassic Re Rebirth. Camera Rebirth. <laughs> Camera Rebirth. Um, so back in the 2000s after Godzilla 2000 had its big mildly successful US theater run um Sony was planning on doing a sequel like they were going to put out the money for a sequel for the movie not Toho it was going to be all an american made sequel um uh, Michael Schlesinger who was the producer and writer for the US version was you know it, it was kind of his brainchild and i guess he's good friends with Joe Dante and like I guess when this was in production like the intent was for him to direct it it fell through obviously like we never got that movie but God, Why, though? I would have loved to see a Joe Dante Godzilla film oh my yeah. god if this is the effort he puts into a uh, fuck you to the studios <laughs> <laughs> wanting Who to make wouldn't... money God. Who would win in a fight, Godzilla or one billion gremlins? <laughs> uh, if it's in the ocean. 
Oh yeah, you're f- <laughs> then okay. Well, each fucked. gremlin. Oh yeah, Godzilla is totally fucked if it's in the ocean. His home turf too. Exactly. Wow. I think each gremlin can spawn four more gremlins. Hmm. Oh, that reminds me. Those gremlin spawning effects were were. Those were top notch. Oh yeah, that was, gross. that was pretty gross because we don't really see that. I, I don't in know. The first movie. I was, that's what I was gonna ask that. I, I didn't know if they like actually showed it that well in the first one, but man, in this one they went all out on that effect because it looked really really good. Yeah. Um. Also, wasn't under the impression that they just come out fully formed from the back. <laughs> I, I thought they like. Uh, I thought they like came out in eggs and like popped out like fucking Looney nope. Tunes or whatever. No, nope. they nope. just come out. <clears throat> yeah. If they're just in the regular fuzzy Mogwai stage, they come out as like puff balls mm-hmm. and then they expand into full size Mogwais. But if they're in their gremlin stage, then they just come out as gremlins. Wow. Goddamn. She hold the fuck up. <laughs> so many rules for these guys. Hold on. Sorry. I'm still <laughs> on the Godzilla Rebirth article. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Um, apparently cast wise, this is going off on a total tangent. Um, they were eyeing Bruce Campbell, Jamie Lee Curtis, Christopher Lee, Leonard Nimoy, all in a Godzilla movie. That would have been the the, the greatest movie cast of all time right there. God. I'm a little, I, I, so I remember reading this article when it came out. When did this article come out? Where's the, what's the date on here? I can't find the date on here, but I remember this article is from a long, from a while ago. I remember reading this when it came out. I'm like, damn, this sounded really cool. And I'm rereading this. I'm like, I'm really upset we didn't get this now. Yeah. Because we could have had, since 98, we've had people going, oh, yeah, I saw Godzilla, the Matthew Broderick one, right? We could have had people saying Bruce Campbell, right? Yeah. It would have brought, oh, my God, it would have brought back Shiro Sano, too. Oh, God, that would have been incredible. All right. Dave, you're just ruining your own day by doing I really this. am. It's okay. Why? I, why? My, my, just forget. Past, it's okay. It's the past couple happening. of days have been bad. I've seen cyber trucks too many times. It's okay. I'm <laughs> telling you, however bad you think you have it, I I have several thought... cyber truck sightings a day. It's worse. <laughs> I thought it's you were going to say, like, I saw a cyber truck, like, crash into something. No, you just saw <laughs> I a cyber saw truck. A cyber truck. Well, here's the thing. I, I have <laughs> seen so many of them over the last week. They're stupid enough in pictures. Seeing them in person is even worse. <laughs> I saw a uh, I saw a white one. Ugh. And it looked Ugh. sweet as shit. A white cyber truck. It was a white cyber truck. I saw a white cyber truck. I saw a picture of someone who <laughs> did we like. We have cyber trucks, but we don't have a Joe Dante Godzilla. I know. Yeah. What the hell. It's the worst the timeline. What the fuck are we doing? <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? God. Like, what's happening? Why why can't we make these bomb ass movies? Why do we have to make these shitty cars? I saw Come a on. picture the other day. Someone uh put the matrix pattern on their cyber truck. Of course they did. It was gross. That I do kind of like that. That does sound cool. <laughs> All right. I mean, maybe if they did it on a cooler car. Yeah. Like one that that's right. the one that didn't look like a shoebox. <laughs> <laughs> but just for the sake of argument, Cybertruck has the flattest sides of any vehicle in history, which would lend itself better to having that pattern. Mm. I really want to know what gremlins would do to the Cybertruck if they got into it. <laughs> It'd be in pieces. It would be in oh, pieces by the end. That's that's what I think we would see with a Gremlins 3. I think they would just be like, what's all the modern stuff mm. we could have? Oh, yeah. Like, Gremlins on TikTok? Oh my god, yes. Oh my god. That's absolutely... Yeah. Gremlins versus the United States government. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just get I mean, in they, control they, they of the They were already on a talk show on, in this movie. Of course, they, they, would, they would probably go to Congress. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gremlins for president. The, uh, the smart gremlin is, uh, is, is back. I'd vote for they him. Gave, they gave him more brain juice. I just I love that it's, it's so ridiculous all those different like serums and injections oh uh, the uh the fucking spider one actually grossed me out a lot I did not like that, that. 
That, that I, was a, a that really, was really good one. Effect. That was one thing I was like well aware of before going. It's like I know there's like the spider gremlin, and that's like the big cool thing at the end. And boy, I, I was mean, it cool. I got, I got actually jump scared by the the actual spider that uh, that uh, the main oh, character Billy, like, pulls back yeah, the curtains. Yeah, I, I was not expecting that. I was like, what the fuck? That's a fucking spider. I don't like spiders. I don't remember uh, that. Yeah, he pulls the curtain back on it, trying to find Gizmo. But he finds a giant spider, and I'm like, wow, that's horrifying. And that thing got out probably. somewhere. It's probably somewhere in there. Oh, it's wandering around New York. Yeah, it's gonna. someone's going to find that thing. It's You know what? No. No. Oh, maybe? No, never mind. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was going to say like... maybe it's like some... Uh, you can make some weird headcanon where it... That spider is the spider from Sting, but then I remember that Sting got it's from, ejected from space. He's an alien. He's, he's an alien. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, here's here's the the big question to to both of you: What's your favorite scene in the whole entire movie? Hmm. I want to know Adam's answer. I need to know it. I can give you my top five. Oh my god! I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Anybody who says that they love something as much as you love Gremlins 2, they never have a singular favorite part of it. I mean, okay, the the they're arguing about the rules, and then the Gremlin comes out and just punches mm-hmm. the guy. That might be number one. That's um, but you have like the the New York news scene. That's just so bananas, especially like the lead up to it. He's doing the news report, and he's like, after their blood curdling rampage of destruction, they. <laughs> seem to be mounting a, a musical number, which is not where you expect that sentence to go. No. And then they just fucking go, and they do multiple just musical bits. It's so stupid. I love it. Um, the, uh, God. Uh, the, I guess if you haven't seen the first one, the, the part where she's talking about Lincoln's birthday. Oh, what? yeah. <laughs> that so she's str- like, oh, what, Don't even what? mention Lincoln. Something horrible happened. So, okay, in the first one, <laughs> one of the worst things I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh, no. She, so Phoebe Cates, she has this monologue about Christmas and why she hates Christmas. Mm. And it's, it's pretty much, she's like, her, her dad was going to come home on Christmas, you know, because he's been off at the office and he doesn't show and days go by and they contact the police and nothing. And then, you know, it's cold winter and they, they go to light the fireplace and that's when she notices the smell. Mm. And it turns out her dad had dressed up like Santa Claus and was coming down the chimney, but he slipped and broke his neck and died instantly. And he was oh, dead that's in the chimney. That is fucked up. And it's what the so fuck? horrible. And she's like, and that's why, you know, I hate Christmas. But then they wow. lampoon that in the second one when someone brings up, like, Lincoln or Lincoln's birthday or something. She's like, oh, don't talk to me about Lincoln. And then starts to go on this whole thing in in the similar fashion as the I, first one. I had completely forgotten about that monologue in the first movie. So the one in this movie just, like, completely came out of left field. I was like, what the fuck was <laughs> that? <laughs> I'm but sorry. it's so, it's like, <laughs> so good. She goes on a thing, she's like, I remember, I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I was in that peanut butter and jelly phase. I'm like, <laughs> she just keeps going. And then they're just like, oh, okay. We don't, we and don't, then have, they just we don't have time for this. Screen. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. See, now I know have to okay. rewatch it. More, now, now I have the extra, the added scenes. context. I said five, right? You said five, yes. Yeah. How many? How many did I do? I think that's three. I think that's yeah. Three. Okay. Uh, the elevator. Phoebe Cates. She's in the elevator, and it's like the gremlins are controlling the elevator, and they're on top of the elevator, and they like their their hands are reaching. And there's some amazing like effects work in that. Um, oh yeah. Just in general, from from a technical standpoint, but like it's a smart elevator. So it's like going up and down, and eventually she goes, elevator, stop, and it stops. And then she's like, good. Elevator, sound alarm. And then there's a beat, and then all the gremlins go, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
they're just god they're such trolls and i love it i just love how just their entire character is they're just assholes they're, just, yeah there's nothing else about them other than they're just assholes i love it uh that's that's what that's four, four. you got one more what's, oh, what's your number what's your number your your number five huh number five. I guess. Oh god and were these um, were these in any your, kind of or order would this be your number one i don't know <laughs> no these... i mean number one number one is the rule arguing okay okay um really anything the brain gremlin is in i mean there's like tiny little bits so not like a full-on scene just like here's a quick shot like there's one of um near the end there's the vegetable gremlin and it's like passed out on the bar and other gremlins are mixing a drink and they reach over and pull an olive <laughs> off of the vegetable gremlin and drop it into a martini that's pretty good mm, i love that one um there's the when they're in the genetics lab one picks up a vial it says acid do not throw in face and then they throw it in the other's face which becomes like the phantom he puts on the phantom mm -hmm. mask and then they bring that back later where he's full on like phantom playing the organ and shit. All right, I, that those... is another time when I had to rewind it. I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so good. I think maybe the most unnecessary is like they, they take Billy to jail and then um, he gets, he gets bailed out. But before that, we see, like, seven mimes come out of, like, a police van. <laughs> and they're not and restrained it, like, at him... all. Yeah. And then, like, one hands him a flower. And that's, the, like, that transition into that scene. I'm like, they hired these people. They paid these people. They put them in full-on costume and makeup <laughs> for, like, two seconds of them just coming. I'm like, he made the most of this budget. The set of this movie must have just been insane. insane. Like you're just there, you show up for work one day and there's just five mimes and like like hundreds of gremlin animatronics sitting around and like fucking just insane <laughs> props everywhere. What have I walked into? But oh. fuck it, we're <laughs> what? <laughs> the behind the scenes documentary for this movie would probably go pretty hard, I gotta say. I hope there. I, I, yeah. I wish there was one. I, yeah, that would be amazing. I would watch that. I would watch it with commentary. Yeah. Oh man, a director commentary version of oh, Gremlins God. 2. We did that last Christmas with um the Home Alones. Mm. Mm. Uh, my, my wife and I we marathon both Home Alones, both because there's only two. No <laughs> more. But then, like, I think it was the next day we're like. We kind of want to do that again, but like that seems silly. So then we're like, "Oh, with commentary." It's different enough. Totally, yeah, totally worth it. Brian, what is what is your favorite scene in the whole entire movie? Um, my favorite scene in the entire movie is, I think I said it. It's it's probably the part where the the bat wing, oh yeah, gremlin turns yeah. into a, gar a gargoyle. Just because the progression of how it gets there is just amazing, and knowing that 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 gar that gremlin's gonna be up there forever, <laughs> it's just pretty uh, pretty good. Um, but if I had to choose something else, probably the uh, way that they kill all the gremlins with the electro gremlin mm. and the water <laughs> cannons and that melting effect is just it's so gnarly and it looks so good. I. I loved that. It was insane. Uh, but also that the uh, the the scene where where Gizmo lives up to uh, my expectations oh. and becomes uh, becomes Rambo and becomes Rambo <laughs> with his little tiny cute little uh, uh, bow and arrow, and he kills the, the big the big spider boy with the paper clips. Yep, I love that. That was that was pretty amazing. So. To survive war, you got to become war. I really thought that they were going to do something like just like something else to get them out of that situation. But having Gizmo show up and save the day was pretty was pretty dope. I do like I the was line not expecting that. she says, like when, when they're wondering why what is what's with this get up. He, and I, I, I can't remember, I think it was I think it was her. I don't know if it, was, it may have been Billy, but like they go, 
I guess they finally pushed him too far or something. They just leave it at that. There's no, there's no yeah. more context to that line. They I just... mean, they did fucking torture him for the they whole did. like they did beginning up until that. So I, I guess so. It makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, as for my favorite scene in the whole entire movie, I think I think it is when the brain gremlin goes on the talk show with 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 Grandpa. Oh, what's his name? A gra- Grandpa Fred. Grandpa Fred. Thank you. Um. The, the judge from uh, Miracle on 34th Street. That's okay. I knew he was in that movie. I can't remember who he was, though. Um, but yeah, just like him. It's just it's such a casual conversation. It's like, oh, what, what, do you, what do you want? It's like, just to be civilized. And then like the one civilization <laughs> and, and the one gremlin like comes up, I assume, like probably trying to ask for an autograph. I think that was supposed to be the bit. And he just takes a gun and shoots. him. he's like, well, and was that civilized? Well, no, not at all. <laughs> It's just it's, it's so fun, it's but just no so way. funny. It's so good. Ugh. But yeah, no, I agree with you, Adam. Like anything anything with the brain gremlin is just is good. Anything with the brain. Yeah. Yeah. That the uh, whoever did the voice, uh Tony did a great Randall, job. Tony, I think. Tony Randall. Tony Randall. Yeah. What a what a voice. Really really I I honestly can't imagine brain gremlin but any other voice other than that one oh. and there there's the scene with him in like the uh, the stock market scene they're like buy sell buy sell and then he's like <laughs> we're advising all our clients put everything into canned food with the shotguns <laughs> they, just, they had so much fun with each of these little vignettes and characters and stuff yeah all right. Absolutely. I feel just so much joy watching this, which is horrible because there's just so much horrible things happening. Who cares? Nah, it's fun. It's, it's so joyous. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. All right. It's just an it's just what like a an hour and forty five minutes of watching people get fucked with. Yeah, mostly maybe sometimes <laughs> dying, but mostly, mostly just getting fucked with. It's mostly harmless. It's, it is mostly it's, just some, except you know, except when they around. shot at that guy. Except then when they actually shot and, that guy. That was literally the only part. And when they killed Dr. What? Catheter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, just those two parts. And someone then. in the movie Wilhelm screamed, so that means they're dead. Oh, that's true. That is true. That's, yeah. I think more people die in the first one than in the second. Mm. But I think this it one... It didn't really seem like they were going for body count in this one. It seems like it was more just comedy. Yeah. But I think this one is PG-13, and I think the original is PG, oddly enough. Huh. First one's PG. I think it is. Was it before? I mean, the that explains time it, may, it may have new. been before PG thirteen was a thing. Let's see, because mm. that PG thirteen was that was for Temple of Doom, right? That, 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 You're that, right. PG. That. It was either that or <sighs> Jaws, maybe. No, Jaws was seventy five. Ja- Temple Jaws of Doom was eighty four. Okay, well, I'm ten years off. Ja- Jaws was PG. I know. Yeah. Oh, so actually, wait, re- Dave. What? Or you? You can keep going, but I just I have to BRB. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, you guys can keep going without me, though. So. All right, sounds I'll, good. I can list ten more scenes. Ten more scenes. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll be right back. I'll unmute myself when I'm back. Okay, that's fine. So apparently, Gremlins was one of the things. Was it came out before Temple of Doom, and it was it was like you said, it was PG, but Gremlins was a big proponent for PG thirteen being created. Mm. The, the the violence. I guess so. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, we've learned something today. Um, but I mean, it's still like cartoony. Well, okay. There's the scene. Now we're talking about Gremlins one. Yeah. Um that I think where there, there was kind of a shift. Like it was, it was definitely campy and kooky with like still horror stuff, but you know, boarding more on like comedy, but then, uh, cause you've seen the first one, right? Yeah. They're, they show up at Mrs. Deagle's house. They're doing like the caroling. Um, and then they just like break into the house and then they mess with her. Like, little going up the stair chair thing and then she like launches out of the second story window <laughs> and crashes onto the street and the like the police officers are right there 
and like it's kind of it's very slapstick it's funny they're you know they show up in little like earmuffs and stuff it's cute but then like we realize they just killed this woman <laughs> and then the soundtrack kicks in with like the dun 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 and you're like oh shit like <laughs> this is that we're still in a horror movie yeah yeah. And I think you kind of get reverse of that with Gremlins too. You have the horror stuff, and then it reminds you, no, you're in a comedy. You're in a satire. But yeah, it was heavily criticized for some of its more violent sequences. In response to this and to mm. similar complaints about Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Spielberg suggested that the, to the MPAA about to alter its rating system. Oh. Which it did two months within so oh so it was initially pg and then they re-rated it pg-13 interesting huh okay i was not aware of that well leonard malton in his review for the first gremlins okay um said the first one it's full of film buff in jokes but negated by too vivid violence and mayhem well i was gonna say like i don't I'm I'm not sure what else I have to say about Gremlins too. So we we could have moved on, but I don't want to move on without Brian. Well, I mean, how many how many more hours do we have? Because I could. Hmm. <laughs> I, could I, talk I mean, forever. at this point, at this point, we should just record a commentary track for Gremlins too. Oh yeah, we're we're longer than the, the film. Well, okay. So jumping back to uh, the twins in the genetics lab, mm -hmm. uh, Lewis and Martin. Named after Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Mm -hmm. You have all these like references and names. So the the four gremlins or Mogwai that come out of Gizmo. So you, you got Gizmo. Um the the goofy one is Daffy. Because you got you got Daffy Duck mm -hmm. with all the sound effects and stuff. Uh, Mohawk, the big bad. But then the other two, uh, George and Lenny, um, Named after uh, uh, of mice and men. Oh, okay. So there's like all these little little references of things in there that they're just like, what? What can we throw at this? Just one one more squeeze one more thing out of each little bit. They don't they don't ever name the other ones like name drop them, do they? I you know what you're right. I don't think they do. I like I know this stuff after like thirty years. Yeah, because you've been watching like, the yeah, movie for <laughs> God knows how long. I've I've got the figures. I've got the, yeah. I don't think they actually say that. It might be in the credits. Maybe I don't know. How do we know this? How do I how know? Do, these yeah. How, where does where does the Gremlins lore come from? Where are we where getting this it, information how, from? Like, how do I not remember where I put my car keys? But I'm like, <laughs> oh, the the Gremlins are Daffy <laughs> and, and George and Lenny. And, Dude, that's that's me with like most Godzilla and Doom knowledge. Like I, I just know that stuff <laughs> off the top of my head. But I'm like, where did I put my sunglasses today? Where's, I don't know. What's my email password? <laughs> yeah, I don't know that shit. I've I have Google Auto I know autofill the for box that. Office take for Gremlins too. <laughs> God. Ugh. All right. Well, Brian can. He'll 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 pick, he'll pick things up. I think we can move on if that's okay with you, Adam. Unless you have, I I mean, I, you you obviously have more to say about Gremlins Two: The New Batch. But is there any parting words you have for this film? Um, I I implore everyone to just go watch the Gremlins duology. Is that the right word? I've been using it. I think duology is, is the, is the I correct term. I feel like if term. I say it with enough confidence. Yeah, watch them and just just have, have a blast. Um, and, oh, uh, I have been doing Gremlins 2 cocktails. Ooh. I'm trying to do, like, one a year every October. Got to stick with the brand. Moving forward, right? So I did, I did a, um, the Big Apple for the brain gremlin. Mm -hmm. um, and then I did spider serum. So this year I'm working on um, bat serum. Oh my God. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So, which I had, I came up with it maybe two years ago, but I finally got the figure. So now I can like, gotcha. Can you can do the review. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like every year I hope to do a different, like gremlins to serum. 
That'll be good. All right. Brian, do you have any parting words for Gremlins 2, the new batch? Uh... I I adored it, and I'm sorry I didn't watch it sooner. Honest. I'm sorry specifically to you, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I understand why it's so important to you. It's, Agreed. But you've seen it, and you love it. I do, and now I want to go, um, I want to immerse myself in Gremlins and watch the first one. That sounded wrong, but I'm going to go watch the first one. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Um, I don't know why it took me this long to watch i think part of it was because i wasn't sure if it was a christmas movie like the first one i'm like should i wait for christmas to watch this i don't know if i should because i have no yeah. idea if the christmas movie or not but it's not so it worked out it's all good mm -hmm. success successful mission mm -hmm. but yeah that's gremlins too go fucking watch that movie holy shit yeah all right well we can Absolutely. we'll move on to our Final segment, what new clue kaiju thing are you checking out right now? Brian or Adam, go. Fight for dominance. I, go, someone I go first. I'm going because something very important just happened. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before, I before, wait, wait, before we go on, uh, we do, I, I do want to mention um, Gremlins 2 is a kaiju movie because there is a very brief scene where they're watching the beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Okay, that's all I wanted yes. to mention. Uh, also, um... Not about it being a kaiju movie, but it's free on YouTube. Yeah, there's that too. I was very pleasantly surprised. I was like, damn, I'm going to have to rent this thing. But no, it was free on YouTube. It was nice. Free on YouTube. I, I can send you one of my copies. <laughs> one of one? Whoa. How many do I've you got have? Blu-ray and DVD. Well, okay. All right, but go on, I thought you were. I thought you were going to be like, I have like 20 copies of this That's movie. what I was going to. That's what I assumed. <laughs> that does sound like something I would do like, oh. I gotta own this. It's five bucks, and then come home and like, oh, I already have three of it. Well, Adam, do you do you know Alex Rushdie? He's 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 the guy who has uh, like twenty VHS copies of Godzilla ninety eight. Oh, ninety eight. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but see, like ninety eight, ninety eights. Ooh, that's I have good. Two Gremlins too. There you go. Okay. All right. The, yeah. The cap. Okay. That makes sense. I get I get you. I can get behind that. Anyways, Brian, sorry. As as sorry to interrupt you. Go uh Okay. Not what something happened? I'm checking out, but something I just got. Okay, what did you get? In the mail. I got Godzilla minus one. Oh, did one. you? The uh, Japanese Blu-ray? Right, right right now. I just got it in the mail, yeah. Oh uh, is Ooh. that is that why you left? Because you got the the notification that it was delivered? Uh no, I had to go I wanted to go help Sam out bring okay. uh you just got back from dog sitting, so I had to help her bring it okay. inside. I see. But I did get the email notification that I had got it in the mail, and I didn't have the mail key, so <laughs> kind of okay. was going to get it. Cool. Partly. All right. But man, just on first look, this thing looks fucking amazing. Oh my god, dude. This is a really good like special edition. Like, holy shit. Uh, oh, that's something we didn't cover on the news. Um, there's a U.S. copy, a, U a U.S. physical oh, coming yeah. out. That's that's happening. Just got announced. Yeah. There's no release date for it yet, which is weird. But I have it on pre-order, so I'll get it. I'll let you know when it comes out. Is is that the only one you're getting? Or I mean, probably. Yeah. The U.S. one. Yeah. I so you I didn't even go for the Japanese. I did not, because I I held out hope that we were gonna get a U.S. copy. Hmm. So. That's all right. I mean, at some point, I'll probably get another edition of it because all of this special edition stuff is in Japanese, and I cannot yeah. read it. <laughs> and I know, so, the, I know the special features yeah. on the U.S. copy will have subtitles. So, yeah. So I might, I might end up double dipping and getting another, uh, another version of it. But I just, I really love the like textured cover of mm. this thing. Yeah, I've been it's seeing pictures. So nice. It looks pretty nice. It is very nice, Dave. Next time you're on this side of the country, you're gonna have to take a look see at it. I'll come. I'll, I'll fly out just to just to see the copy, and then I'll fly back home immediately. Yeah, <laughs> you're here for like 20 minutes, and you're like, "All right, all right, goodbye, Brian." Yeah, and you just leave. <laughs> you can spend more time on the plane. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Adam, what have what have you been checking out? Um, I 
just got notified that my Super 7 Ultimates minus color minus one Godzilla Ooh. is shipping soon. Um, so I'm curious to check that out. I have, I have so many things on pre-order, I just I forget. And then it's like, oh, cool, I'm getting a, a thing. You just turn off you notifications on your e- on your email. Just it'll all be a surprise. That's must, I mean, must be that's nice, Adam, fair. having stuff to look forward to. <laughs> wow, that's one of the wonderful things about like ADD <laughs> is that like I buy things for future me because I will forget, and then it's like, oh hey, I got this thing. Thanks, past me for buying this for me. <laughs> mm. I kind of had that today. I I ordered the this. Uh, I ordered minus one like back like right when it went on sale. Mm. Which was like two months ago, and I I forgot that I I bought it, <laughs> so I got the email notification that it shipped yesterday, and I'm like, damn. Well, right. okay. Another thing, next month, assuming this is being posted in September, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So next month, October, uh, the official Godzilla cookbook is coming out. <gasps> is it? And I I have that pre-ordered. I'm excited. Um, I saw. Because, like, on Amazon, you can see, like, the table of contents. Mm-hmm. And there's a drinks section. Um, but some of the names, I'm like, I have ideas for some of these things that have very similar names. So I'm, like, <laughs> panicking. I'm like, I want to post all mine before this book comes out. So people don't go, oh, you just copied the book. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious now you can go, the book copied me. The book copied me. Well, yeah. I mean, there there were some oddly similar Jurassic things in the Jurassic cookbook. Really? That I... You should, so you should like, sue, sue Universal Studios. Hey, you have the rights to the thing, and I don't. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Hire me, please. Wait, hold on. I didn't mean it. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> um, but no, I'm like, okay, how many how many of these things can I fit in? Or how Just similar are they going to be? No. Well, mm-hmm. as for as for me, I haven't been checking out a whole lot. But just the other day, I saw Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and it was okay. But the Don't only tell me anything. I uh, well, I'm, I'm I was I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll, I'll give my my okay. general thoughts. I thought it was okay. Um, it's fun. Everyone's clearly having a blast. Uh, there are entirely too many plot lines going on at once, though, to the point where it feels like everything's just stretched thin. Like, none of the plot lines are fleshed out enough because just there's too much happening. Um, but the reason I mention it here is because uh, they bring the sandworm from the first Beetlejuice back. And oh my god, someone needs to give Tim Burton money to do another stop motion film because that is some of the smoothest stop motion animation I have seen in years. I, I need mm. I need it. I need it. Give I mean, hey, give that the new money. Wallace and Grummet looks good. That's true, but that's that's all Ardman does. They only do claymation. Tim Burton does all kinds that's of true. stuff. So you know, it's still within our definition to cover a Wallace and Gromit thing. Ah, you're so right, Brian. And Wallace and Gromit is about as important as Godzilla is to me. So it's true. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll put it on the list. Don't worry. Do it. But I first think... of the Were Rabbit, fantastic movie in peak fantastic. peak cinema. It but is. I think I think that's going to be it for us, unless anyone else has any parting words or. Any anyone in general, honestly. I think that if we're getting a Beetlejuice sequel in 2024, I think that absolutely leaves the door open for a Gremlins 3. I think you're right. Will it happen? I don't know. Because again, they've been trying to get it made for God knows how long. So who knows? Just offer Joe Dante full creative control. Yeah. It's what they did last time. It worked like a charm. Well, it's Triple funny. The budget. It's because he's he's actually working on another movie that we put, were potentially going to cover for this episode. He's doing a Halloween themed remake of Little Shop of Horrors. Shut up. 
Okay. No, no, no. Keep talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, th this was announced earlier this year, actually. Um, How did I miss this? I don't know. <gasps> Let's see. Yeah, iconic filmmakers Joe Dante and Roger Corman, rest in peace, I guess he's not working on it anymore, are teaming with Emmy-nominated veteran producer Brad Crevoy, CEO of MP MPCA, on Little Shop of Halloween Horrors, a reboot of Corman's famed 1960 horror comedy Little Shop of Horrors. Holy yeah. fuck. <laughs> So he can't because make... that was the other film. Yeah, yeah. We we had to, we had... I'm like that or, or Little Shop. We had talked about doing this as well, but we went with Gremlins too because I've seen Little Shop of Horrors. I would I, I prefer to do something I hadn't seen before. But yeah, so he's he's working on on that. He can't do Gremlins three yet. All right, when that comes out, we I'm will back cover on it. Here. We'll cover it. Don't you worry. We'll get you back on it. Yeah. <sighs> mm -hmm. All right, well, I think that's our show for today. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube, all at Talking Toku. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Adam, where can people find you? Uh, YouTube, Thirsty Thursday Toys. I believe it's all one word. Or just at Thirsty Thursday Toys. You'll find me. I do toy and cocktails in reviews and I combine them and wackadoo. There's some Gremlins 2 stuff in there, like I was saying. Check it out. It's nonsense. Oh, I actually was meaning to ask you, how was the Tiamat cocktail? Because it sounded pretty good. It's pretty good. I Someone messaged me and they're like, you don't talk about like the flavor profiles <laughs> of the drinks. You just make them. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's fun. Because you get the ginger beer in there and it's like surprisingly spicy for how sweet mm. it is yeah i loved i love ginger beer so that that was that was kind of the oddball thing in that in that recipe i'm like ooh, that's that sounds kind of interesting i might have to make mm. that but okay cool that's 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 all i wanted to know um but yeah i mean you could like the dragon fruit syrup you can probably scrap that that's more just for the color yeah but yeah cool all right well yeah that's it um what what are we doing next, Brian? I I don't know. I think it's going to be another one of these. Oh, um, where we we might where have we an ask. interview. We might have an interview. I, I got to double oh, check okay, on that. Man. Might have an interview. I got to reach mm -hmm. out to the to the person, but we might have an interview. Okay. So yeah. Um, after that, after that is we're going to be going into October. And we have we already have October planned. Like the we all, have an idea. We we have multiple ideas. Like, I have like, one that I'm actually very excited about. Which one is that? The werewolf. Okay, uh, the one we talked about. The werewolf. One. Yes. Uh, so I actually. Do we want to talk about our October schedule already, or nah. do we want to wait? We'll wait. We'll wait. Okay. Nah, we'll wait. Because I, I I I went through the calendar. We are we have October planned out completely, completely. Yeah. We're, we're good. It's gonna be a we it's gonna be a fun month. Things. It's gonna be a really funny month. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about it at the end of next at the episode end of this month. At the end of the next episode, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Maybe with a, an interview. Maybe with who 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 the heck knows. Okay. Goodbye. Mm. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>